Welcome to the Millionaire Car Salesman Podcast, the number one resource for automotive sales professionals, managers, and owners to learn how to make money, accumulate wealth, and to all out ball out in the auto industry. And now your hosts, Sean V. Bradley and L.A. Williams. One, two, three, four, five, and three. Hey everybody, this is Sean B. Bradley, president of Dealer Synergy and the creator of the Millionaire Car Salesman Group. And man, yo, I got, I'm excited today because uh, not only we got somebody local to me in the Philadelphia area, but a fellow CRM Jedi Knight. Um, so I want to introduce my man, Brian, uh, Brian Foley from Pacifico, and it's Ford, correct? Uh, Ford, Mazda, and Hyundai. Ford, Mazda, Hyundai, that's what's up. So brother, how you Thank doing? You. And life is so good. Um, every day's a dream. Uh, how are you? Thank you for having me on. This is, this is awesome. Uh, for sure. No, again, especially since we're in the backyard, I was a Philadelphia based company for the first nine and a half years that I owned the company. And then uh, my accountant was like, hey, do you know it's cheaper to buy a corporate building in South Jersey than it is to lease in Philadelphia? And so I was like, uh, Boom. So we bought a 6,000 square foot facility here in Autobahn. So I'm about 14 minutes away from the Philadelphia airport. Oh, wow. Yeah, it looks beautiful back there, too. I think you made a good decision. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, let's go into a little bit of profile of you and, and your background. So obviously you work in Philadelphia. How long have you been in automotive for? Uh, seven years. This is the only automotive uh, dealership I ever worked for as well. OK. Now, what are the positions that you've held in the dealership? I was a sales consultant briefly, and then I transitioned to BDC agent. Um, from there, I gradually developed into the director of all three stores. It started on the Mazda Hyundai side, but then I eventually um, gained access of all three. Okay. All right. Now, when you sold cars, how many cars did you sell a month? So I only did it for about three months, but I was averaging 12. Um, okay. I was going a little crazy, you know, with the orphans. I was harvesting cargo. Uh, Craigslist, you know, leads. I was really, uh, really, really grinding out there. But to be honest, when I interviewed for the job, um, I came in looking for the BDC job. It was full. You know, there was no room at the end. So he liked my personality. I needed a job. Uh, I was still kind of considering law school. I decided to be a sales rep, but I was knocking on the door constantly. And when one agent quit, instead of looking externally, they just offered me the job. And, and then I was where I belonged. So, but here's my point though, which I was alluding to here is that most dealerships in the United States, they have conflict between the BDC and the showroom. And in my opinion, I've been doing internet sales and BDC personally for 23 years since the nineties. And I'm going to say this part of the problem is that some internet directors and yo, you're my people's director. So I mean, no disrespect, but you know, when you've never taken it up before, when you've never sold a car before, you lose a little credibility and you lose some respect to true automotive professionals. And that's because sometimes there's internet directors that are just no disrespect, but they're glorified receptionists or glorified call center people. And I think that's a bad move. So I, I really like the fact that not only are you the BDC director, but you have experience selling cars. I don't give a shit if you only sold three months. The fact is you were on that point. You were on the lot. You were on the showroom. You upped a customer. You did the road to the sale. You put something together. So to me, that is something that you could build on into the BDC. Now, with that being said, do you see my perspective why there's some dealerships that have challenges in their internet or BDC department because their leader has never even sold a car in some cases? Absolutely. And I, I think you can lack the appropriate empathy if you never you know, came from that background. So you know, having that empathy, and a lot of it goes with um, setting it up, the transition from not only internet to appointment, but appointment to the floor, making sure it's comfortable because we have to remember, and I have to consistently pound this into my agent's brains who haven't sold, that if they're not setting everything up for a fluid transition into the floor, A, they're decreasing the likelihood of a sale, B, they're going to agitate the uh, customer, and C, they're going to agitate the employee that they have to work with every day. So that harmonious uh, you know, nature that you need, uh, it comes from a place of empathy. And you're right, you kind of have to have a background in it to even understand it. 
hundred percent. Okay, good. So give us a, an approximate, how many units does your group do from the internet that you're, you're responsible for three stores. So on a monthly basis, how many internet sales are, are you and your departments responsible for? Uh, anywhere from 150 to 190. All right. So, so to put this into in perspective for our audience listening to this, NAD has a profile. The National Automobile Dealer Association says that there's roughly 16,500 franchise dealerships. Out of those 16,500 car dealerships, the average dealership has about 10 salespeople, two um, sales managers, plus a GM and or GSM and F&I. So it's about 14 people to sell less than 100 cars. I think it's about 92 to 95 cars right now because you know the pandemic took a little dip. But even before the pandemic, the average dealership sold only about 100 cars. So it's not like it's a lot. So the fact that you are selling almost double the amount of cars out of your internet department um, is crazy. And it's amazing because you're selling almost double what the average full-blown dealership you know, sells. So to put this in perspective for our audience, to sell 200 cars, the average dealership needs 20 salespeople four sales managers, uh, two GMs or GSMs, and two F&I. All of that, okay, all those bodies to sell about 190 to 200 cars. You're doing it yourself. How many BDC reps do you have, if any? Five. You have five BDC reps. So you're, you and five BDC reps are doing what 20 salespeople and four managers are doing. That's pretty impressive, bro. Yeah, you know, um, I have a I have heavy expectations, and I, le I levy them on them every single day. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with um, just how we engage the platform, the CRM. Vin Solutions is a magnificent tool, um, and a, you know, a lot of it has to do with things I've learned through trial and error. Uh, I've done a lot of import campaigns, and one of the things I learned during the slow times was it was a lot better to blast a couple thousand people in my database do a wellness check, ask them how the car is, because the cool mathematical phenomenon that's going to happen is 300 or 400 is going to say, hey, Brian, you know what? I'm really ready for a new car. And in my estimation, that's always been a better fight than um, fighting over third party um, leads like, you know, auto by tells where it's incredibly price driven. I have to jump into conquest zones and, and kind of lose my shirt to make a deal. So, you know, having that relationship that's already um, internal with my own base uh, just farming them on a consistent basis has really worked wonders and just maintaining a heavy sales output, even during the slow times. I, I, I agree. Let's go back to what you just said, because I want to unpack a lot of the conversation that, you, that you're just talking about. I would say, um, you know, CRM is by far one of the absolute most important aspects of a dealership. Now, I don't know if you know this, but I actually work with Vin Corporate and a lot of the other CRMs. I'm on Vin's advisory board for nice. um, you know consultants and and dealers. It's pretty awesome. I'm also on, on multiple other advisory boards from Ely, Dealer Socket, uh, etc. We work with about 13 different CRMs here at Dealer Synergy, but Vin is definitely one of my favorites. I work directly with the head of Vin Solutions and the head of X Time. His name is Mark Vickery. Me and my team have flown to Kansas City numerous times to meet with their executive team. Their agents and their managers have been to my studios in New Jersey. Oh, and man, wow. what I like about them is the back end. You know what I mean? I love the, the ability and how you could customize it. But I want to go over a couple of things with you. Here's some facts that most people don't know. Fact number one. No CRM company out there, including Vin Solutions, who we both love, right? Not one CRM company out there trains on CRM. The only thing CRM companies train on is buttonology. Vin has 101 certifications, and not one of them has anything to do with action plans, CRM processes, CRM timelines, mm. CRM tasks and activities strategically. OK, they don't focus on templates, text message templates, email templates, automated templates, video templates, HTML templates. They don't talk anything about social media DMing on Instagram DM, LinkedIn DM, um, you know, uh, Facebook DM, TikTok or WhatsApp or utilizing things like Venmo, Cash App, 
or uh, Apple FaceTime. I'm going somewhere with this. They don't talk about anything other than buttonology. Now, I'm going to give you an analogy here, and this should hopefully enlighten our listeners. You said you work for one of your franchises is Ford. Ford manufacturer and no other manufacturer mandates road to the sale training. Not one of them does. Okay. The only thing Ford OEM mandates is product knowledge, training, and certification. So if you work at Pacifico Ford, you have to, and you're on the showroom floor, if you're a certified sales consultant, you have to get certified through Ford manufacturer. But Ford leaves how to actually sell the car and all those details to the dealership or dealer group. I've been trying to tell people for years, wake up from the matrix, because if you have a CRM, you're delusional if you're thinking you went through some bullshit CRM training that your people know anything about CRM or they're trained because they're not. At best, you're getting CRM product knowledge training. That is it, but knowledge. If you don't have any information, knowledge, experience when it comes to processes, action plans, frequencies, cadence, content, et cetera, you're going to suck. And that is people, the number one reason why 92% of all automotive CRMs are either not set up correctly, broken, antiquated, have messed up templates, process, and shit like that, and or your people are not using them. My brother, do you agree with what I said or do you disagree? Man, you're preaching. You are preaching the gospel. <laughs> yeah, I, I see the underutilization of this uh, product every single day and it drives me nuts. And it mostly just makes me sad, to be honest. Um, and then even to take like the foundational stuff that you're saying and like turn the process and cadence in if then scenarios, like buying signals, automating texts off of them in the back end that you have to get with like the AMP team before. Like there's so many things that people haven't even considered doing um, that really spark magic within it. But like, you can look at a you know one of two ways. You could either be a farmer or a waiter, and you can wait for a lead to come in, or you can kind of generate your own processes based on your pre-existing base. Which uh, if, you know, I'm fortunate enough to work for a place that's severe longevity. We've been in business for over a hundred years, so I have very extensive CRM platform to draw upon. But um, you're absolutely right, man. Uh, if you're not you know knowing the, what the buttons are is one thing, but not knowing how to properly leverage them is is uh, it's unfortunate. So let's go through, because I'm really excited about talking about this. In your experience, why do you think, the why, why do you think dealerships are so disconnected from the reality of, of, A, how to set up a CRM, how to utilize a CRM, how to maximize a CRM, how to hold your their people accountable to CRM, um, uh, you know, uh, transparency, accuracy, et cetera. Why do you think there's such a uh, debacle when it comes to automotive CRM? I think uh, I think they expect the specialists to do it, right? I think, uh, I think it was set up to where, hey, Vin, show us your optimal processes based on your experience, and we're going to run with that. We'll modify it accordingly based on our you know, company culture. But then, um, you know, that, Vin was set up in my dealership before I got here, right? So I had to come in and, and kind of change it as I saw fit. And I'm very fortunate to have a great deal of creative autonomy. So once I kind of figured out the processes, how it interacts with itself, it was kind of easy for me to jump in. But if you're asking me why most people do... Unfortunately, I think it's because most people kind of do the bare minimum just to kind of get by and uh, they kind of defer to other people to solve these cha challenges, you know, and then they wait for, you know, people like me who generally get excited about diving in and they say, oh, well, we have our savior now, which is unfortunate. So, no, I, I would agree. I think that and uh, as you see, I'm trying to create this content for this podcast the right way so that, that people could digest this. The reality is I think that there is a lot of misinformation out there. Dealers and automotive professionals think because they sign up with a CRM company that their CRM company is responsible for providing processes and providing training and providing that stuff. And the reality is not. I have a, a diva wife. She's awesome. You know what I mean? But, and let's just say that we have a, a million dollar house, right? There's no way in hell my wife is going to allow the people that do the sheet rocking and the piping and the concrete and that to decide 
what the decorations, what the furniture, what the paint's going to look like. That's the analogy that I want everybody listening to this podcast to understand is that CRM is a tool. The CRM's company's only responsibility is to give you the software. It is your job to customize it. Now, Brian, I'm going to see how much knowledge you really do know because you seem pretty intelligent and you seem really passionate. Do you know that the CRMs that are in the automotive industry, including the one that we love, VIN, right, is antiquated. There is no uh, PlayStation 5 CRM for the automotive industry in our industry, okay? In your opinion, what would you rank uh, VIN Solutions as or any other CRM in automotive on a PlayStation scale or Atari scale? What would you say VIN Solutions is? That would be like a Super Nintendo. Right? Uh I would actually give it a PlayStation, you know, three, you know what I mean? I, I, me personally, I would give it a PlayStation three. Now for the folks that are not gamers like us, what that means is it's not ColecoVision. It's not Atari in my opinion, but it's definitely not a PlayStation five. And here's why the reality is there are CRMs in the CRM world. Okay. Like Salesforce, like Zoho like HubSpot, these are world-class CRMs that are leveraging the most advanced aspects of all technology and strategies and integrations, et cetera. But what, what companies outside automotive do is they'll subscribe to a Salesforce or Zoho, and then they have to have a development team, a program team, actually customize that CRM to their industry, their vertical, their this and their that. In our industry, people don't normally do that. It's a lot easier to just turn around and go to an automotive vendor that specializes in the uniqueness of our industry, like inventory, DMS integration, and things like that. So the reality is this, there are no PlayStation 5 CRMs in the automotive of industry. So with that being said, what is the best CRM? In my opinion, Vin Solutions is definitely right there at the top. But if you're not customizing the CRM, any CRM, but Vin included, if you're not setting it up with your own action plans, processes, templates, content, etc., you know, you are doing your, yourself your organization, and most importantly, your customers and your prospects a mass disservice. Let me be specific, and I want your opinion on this. If I'm a GM, a dealer principal, or especially a business development director, BDC director, I need to understand what all my processes are. Guys, think about this. Everyone in your dealership, especially in the BDC or the sales or management, technically their success is predicated upon the CRM. What I mean by that, theoretically, if I log into the dealership and I go to my dashboard in Vin Solutions or any other CRM, it should tell me what to do, when to do it, and keep me organized for everything. But I'll give you an example here. Let's say that somebody did a shitty job in the CRM setup, and they say, for Philadelphia, a Ford dealership, that when an internet purchase request comes in, we're only going to follow up with it for two weeks or four weeks or even six weeks. Okay. And if we follow up for even six weeks, what we're going to do is for so the first two weeks, we're going to do a blitz and do that. But then after that, we're going to give them a five-day break and some other bullshit. Here's the problem with that. The problem is the gestation period. The average buying cycle before the pandemic was 90 days for a new car. Now it's 140 to 150. So if you're only following up with somebody for two to six weeks, but yet you're literally 12 to you know 16 weeks is national gestation, you're missing massive opportunity. If you are skipping certain frequencies in there, you're missing opportunity. So again, it is imperative that every manager or owner or executive manager should know what every single processes are supposed to be firing on. Brian, do you agree or disagree with that? A hundred percent. My general manager is very knowledgeable about the process trees. Um, how he even knows, you know, how to suppress events and what ramifications they have. So he's very, very well uh, versed in it. And uh, you're absolutely right. You know, we get together on a pretty frequent basis. Something as simple as what the uh, catalyst for this conversation was service to sales transition. Well, mm -hmm. two things. One, just to jump on that, you know, there's automation in VIN. There's no reason you can't have an automated robot text go out to everybody who's coming into service 10 minutes to say, hey, we'll offer a nice little discount on your vehicle to appraise it. If, if the computer's doing it, why? why it, there's no excuse. And to go back to your uh, later follow up, you know, after the the post-pandemic time span, there's no excuse to not follow up for 120 days, especially when you have automations in, in places like VIN. You know, um, 
one of my favorite, <laughs> one of my favorite things I see in Vin on a regular basis is like day 68. And the customer says, who is this? Because a robot hit him and said, did you get my last test? Some, something real innocuous, something like an engagement heavy, you know, a big boy. And, and then I can reintroduce myself and find out, well, they didn't buy a car. And then I can isolate it to the specific reason, which, as you know, is only so many. Um, but now I've reengaged with somebody 68 days after the initial inquiry when I would, I would estimate a lot of my competition already gave up. So here's what I want to do, because I'm loving this. As you see the, the framework that I'm putting for the podcast, I want to establish the significance and importance of CRM. I also wanted to identify the reality that most people are not utilizing CRM the correct way. We're both on the same page. You are very knowledgeable in CRM and you are very successful because of the CRM. So I want to now turn it over to you and let's Let's go through it. You know, uh, give us, in your opinion, some of the most amazing things that you personally are doing with CRM or Vint Solutions that's showing that that's giving you results. Whether they're extra leads, they're extra appointments, extra shows, extra sales, or they're missed opportunities or they're reactive opportunities. Let's break it down one by one. All the cool shit you're doing with Vin, please. Yeah, absolutely. So the sales to I mean, the service to sales transition text has been particularly Stop. amazing. Now remember, okay, I'm a veteran like you, so I understand what you mean. I need you to explain this for us, come simple to the audience for the newbies that are coming through. Can you imagine somebody's got promoted to internet director or some shit or or what have you? And they're like service to sales. What does that mean? So explain what you mean by gotcha. that. Okay, I got you. So in the back end of Vin Solutions, when you have administrative access. You have access to the settings button. And then from there, you can go to the sales and service processes. That is where you should spend a lot of your time as a manager director, because these aren't static processes. They're dynamic and they change based on culture events like the pandemic. They change on a lot of different, a lot of different variables. So um, when you go into this process tree, you know, you're going to have your new internet sales process. That's where uh, I was referring to the long-term follow-up. And, and no real excuse for not having it. I understand, you know, 800 calls for people who are four months old might not be attainable, but if Vin Solutions sending those texts out, it's very, very easy. So you would go in there and for example, under new internet sales lead event automated process. And this is, you know, fairly basic in the setup as what they're doing right now. But there's some ways that you can really, really play around with to take it to the next level. So I'm taking a look at your screen. So right there on the showroom visit follow-up. There's one, there's a good example. So if you create a custom process, you can actually go in there and every few days say, hey, did you get an updated quote? Hey, this way, when your sales floor are incredibly busy, like I like to have my team, I can let the robot follow up on real customers who right. are in the store. If you want to go down to um, service appointment uh, reminder, this is a big one. All right. So when you go in there and you do a custom, yep. And then you can, so you would name it something like service to sales incentive. And then I, I like to send it 10 minutes before a scheduled visit. So what Vin is going to do is 10 minutes before the DMS has put their, their appointment in Vin solutions, that customer is going to get a text on their phone. Here's another thing. You need to make sure that person's opted in, which is a whole other process that you would have to kind of uh, engage in. But Things like that are, they're, they're fairly simple and thin, but if you no, really hey, want to take it. This is good, but going back, let's go. So what do you mean when you say sales to service customer? So we understand when you log into the ILM CRM settings, but specifically, what do you mean by sales to service customer? Oh, so, so I'm sorry, service to sales customer. Service so, to sales customer. So these are people who have a service appointment who will be walking in my door. Correct. Um, now, from what I, you know, this was uh, something that arose when we were getting very little leads. We had very little inventory. It was more of a vehicle acquisition idea. Now it's kind of transitioned to a trade heavy um, concept. So they're, when they schedule their sales appointment, however they do it, so something like X time, uh, the DMS is going to capture it. It's then going to transition it over to VIN solutions. So that service appointment is now in VIN. Mm -hmm. when, you get that, when you set that text up, they will then get that text prior to that designated service appointment. Now, the content of the text is very important because I don't, it, it all depends on, you know, how. Um... So specifically, one of the ways is this, when you're inside VIN and you're a salesperson and you're looking at your dashboard, I'm going to jump into my daughter works at RK 
Kia Subaru in, in Vineland. Uh, she's a manager now, but let's just go into one of the salespeople. Okay. So I'm going to go into one of the salespeople right here. Manager. Okay. We're going to go into Chevy. Okay. So if we go into Domenico. Okay. Look, he's got service appointments here. So I'm a salesperson. I'm logging in and he's got all of these service appointments that are coming in tomorrow. Um, he's got one, two, three. So in Vint Solutions, like you said, well, there's X time, the service appointment was created. It gets into VIN. It's on here. So what you're saying is that, let's just say um, Patricia Hooligan is coming in tomorrow. Yeah, let's see, let's see if any of them are opted in for text. Okay. So walk us through how to do this. I'm following your lead. Absolutely. So once you have the process set up, you're going to go in and you're going to find these service appointments. There's also another tab that um, is like a central capture of them all, on, you know, on the left, the, the service appointments. So I would go into the customer's dashboard. I make sure they're opted in so they can get that message. It's also an email. So you want to make sure, you know, you can't reactivate an email, but um, to make sure that there's no misspellings. So this one, are they opted in for text? They are. So they, they would receive this message. And let's, you know, theorize the message says something like, if you will, if you like a discount on your vehicle, uh, your service visit, ask for the appraisal team and we will appraise your vehicle and offer a discount after your service has so, been completed. So this is great so stuff. So where would that get put in? Do you put that in manually or do you put that into the uh, service appointment process? Process. And then all you have to do is make sure that people are opted in. This is, And then you let the robots you know, ensure 100% deliverability. Okay, so specifically, let's kind of go in here. So this is what you were talking about just a couple minutes ago. So I'm going to jump out of here, go into my store. All right, so what you're saying is you're going to go to settings. You're going to ILM CRM, you know, processes right here. And then it's going to be under service reminders. Yes, and then you're going to um, add a custom process. Okay, so service appointment reminder right here. Boom, you're going to turn on it, add a custom process. Oh, yeah. Then you're going, to, you're going to build it out. And then, so- And then the add event. event. You're going to add an event and then that event's going to be uh, send automated text. Okay. And then the verbiage again, can you repeat approximately what you say? Yes. So Pacifica Water Group is offering a discount on your vehicle while it is here in service for allowing us to appraise it. If you would like to take advantage, ask for the appraisal team. So a couple of important things. One, I have to have the customer initiated because if I have 50 people say they want if I, I used to ask people, would they like the vehicle appraised? And I get 20 responses and I couldn't physically do it all. So then I was like, okay, how can I agi you know, agitate enough curiosity in the customer to have them autonomously do it? Well, I'll have them ask, and, and it's asking for the appraisal team also ensures that they have to go through sales and they're not trying to circumvent the appraisal by just going to service and asking for a discount. So I'm having a customer do it on their own volition and I'm having them start off in sales before it transitions to service so we can at least get that shot at their car. And now by doing this, by, by um, how long have you been implementing this strategy? About a year and a half. And, and how, give us some, some numbers to, to, to put this in perspective. How has just that one process addition helped you? So I don't have the stats in front of me, but I can tell you before the hours of one o'clock in all three of my showrooms, there's at least three visits of service customers getting their vehicles appraised. It's, it's, it's been wildly successful. That and and another part of it is I, we use, uh, I, I put it in caps, uh, discount, and I put a couple of dollar signs and I left it purposefully ambiguous because if we don't buy their car, they don't buy a car from us. I don't want to promise them anything. So um, right. that that ambiguous discount, I get a lot of people. How much of a discount? Ask for the appraisal team, and before I know it, now they're up in the, the show in Visalog. It's it's been uh, it's pretty cool. That's awesome. Okay, this is exactly what I was excited for for this interview with you, man. Uh, my team said that that you've got your stuff dialed in. Give me some other hacks or some other cool things that you're doing with Vin Solutions uh, that that's providing value and or results. <laughs> Dealer Synergy is an award-winning training, consulting, CRM, recruiting, and accountability firm. We are a 13-time Dealer Choice Award winner. We have proudly served automotive dealers for 20 years and have trained over 150,000 automotive sales professionals. 
We've worked with over 3,700 rooftops across the country, not including our global clients in Canada, Russia, the Dominican Republic, and more. We are the most sought after subject matter experts and pioneers of the automotive industry. Our executive team has a combined 75 plus years of automotive industry expertise at the highest level. We've literally taken dealerships from having challenges and problems, some even on the brink of bankruptcy, to becoming national success stories. Dealer Synergy had really helped build something from the ground up. You guys have made me fall in love with what I've always loved to do. I give credit to Dealer Synergy. I just hired eight people and Dealer Synergy HR really was critical in me being able to do it. You provided the training, you helped us with our CRM, you provided a solution for a lot of things that I was looking for. Our people love LA, what Karen has done for me personally. Franca, her communication back and forth. You've got a really solid group of people. Having somebody like Sean and his company that knows automotive, so the marriage between what knowledge he possesses and the fact that he has this great video production staff, it gives you the best of both worlds. So I would certainly recommend them. Sean comes in the dealership and he advanced us light years ahead of our competition. Just an absolute leading edge training company. Go to BradleyOnDemand.com and give your team access to the best automotive training in the world. Uh, custom import list. Now, this was huge for me. Mm. These, um, these custom campaigns have been a game changer. So what I like to do, we were doing it with uh, Auto Alert, and we were grabbing, you know, different segments, different lists. And I'm now with AMP, we transitioned to, you know, Vin Solutions Equity Mining Solution, and I'm going to be kind of um, experimenting with different things, which I'm really excited for. But for example, I would take a list from Motor. Let's say, I don't know, um, people with private uh, offers from Ford. And let's say there was 700 of them. Well, I would take this list, I get a CSV file. So I download it from Auto Alert. I call Vin Solutions. Now you, it does take uh, integration support to accomplish something like this. So you have to call them, you have to um, talk them through the process. Some of them know the process. I actually had to talk some through my specific process, which has been really weird. But um, you know, they endow things like automated text in there. So I can grab a list of theoretically, you know, 800 to 8,000 people, take that CSV file, give it to VIN, have them import it into uh, their own process. Now I have 8,000 people who just got my email, my text, and then five minutes, 10 minutes later, I can have the lead go to bed so it doesn't congest my reporting. So things like this, you know, I sent you a screenshot, I don't know, a few months ago. And, you know, when you go into VIN and you click tests and you see 500 replies and then it goes up to 700 replies. Yes. And and, and people are saying, you know, you're going to get a fair, a, a good amount of who is this? You're going to get a, a fair amount of F off and you're going to get a fair amount of I would like a new car. What do you got for me? So right. um, when you see that coming by the hundreds, you know, it changes your whole perspective on shit when it comes to VIN. And it really makes you, makes you know, like what Aristotle says, like, all I know is I don't know. Right. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Okay. This is good. Give me more. What else you got? What other hacks or, or setups or, or resources that I'm going to give you some of mine? Cause I, I, so, I, I mean, if you're a sales manager, first thing, first thing I did when I uh, was promoted from BDC, man, uh, BDC agent to BDC manager was I had a notification for every time an inbound text came in from a customer. Like mm -hmm. I, and, and it was, I just wanted to see, I wanted to, I wanted to just get inundated in conversations to, to know what the heck's going on. And I wanted to know what's going on from every sales rep, if they're saying the right thing. So if you're a sales manager and you have a team of like eight or, or, you know, really it doesn't even matter. You should have under that same process tree where it says customer text, you should have a notification, a generic test notification for yourself. So when John gets a text from his customer and John's off today, you can intercept it and keep it going because what I've noticed is even small lapses in time up to an hour could cost you a sale. So there has to be visibility from everybody, every angle. Anytime a customer sneezes, coughs, farts, it don't matter in VIN. You need to see it and know it happened. So that's like the first thing I'd say for a, if you're like a sales manager. Okay. And how do you, what do you do to get your people to use the CRM and hold the people accountable? Because obviously, you've displayed subject matter expertise. You understand VIN, you're passionate about CRM. So obviously I have no doubts about you, but you're the anomaly. You're not the average person by far with CRM uh, literacy. So how do you get all of your people to, to use the CRM and get good at the CRM? Passion, man. I sit here and I 
talk about the processes and I explain it. And I, um, I talk about, you know, the, the reasons why we should get excited that we get gifted this amazing, like you said, it's an, it's a blank slate infrastructure mm -hmm. and it's incumbent upon us to do something with it. So it's like, I just take what, what this passion that you were alluding to and saying that, uh, you know, I have, and I make, it's like, you better fall in line or find another job. And what I've found is I have such a strong team that they all, you know, they might not share the same exponentially crazy level of excitement I have, but they have a moderate amount and they have a very respectable amount. So um, I, I just make them have it. It's like, get on board or get out. And they've all got on board. You know what? I love that. Let me share with you some of my cool things that, that these are basic and you might've heard of them before, but internet BDC, the hardest part, I'm going to give the secret. All right, lean in, bro. The hardest part of internet sales BDC, and this is 23 years, six countries, almost 4,000 rooftops I personally trained and built. That's a lot of shit. A lot of shit. The hardest part of this, bro, is just getting engagement. That is single-handedly the hardest part. I was just in Idaho um, like a couple of days ago, like literally I was just in Idaho working with a six rooftop dealer group. They have uh, the dealers in Idaho and California. They've got fucking all these franchises. They got power wow. sports. They got RVs, but it was all, it was in the group. I posted it the other day. It was crazy. And when I'm talking to them, what blew me away, you know, cause this is such a great team. I mean, to own six stores in, in California, Idaho, you're, you're making bank. And I'm talking to them and they're saying, yeah, our people are making, you know, four five, six calls and they're not getting people responding and they're, they're getting disenchanted. They're getting frustrated thinking these people are no good. And I'm like, my dude, there's a lot of misinformation out there. You've got to understand that JD Power says, NADA says, it takes on average nine to 11 attempts before the first response before the first engagement. I mean, I've been doing BDC so long. There was a time where it was like, uh, like I could say this shit, a Belizean sweatshop because I'm Belizean, right? So it's like, get in the corner, psh, make them calls, psh, make them calls. And, and bro, you're in Philly. We can keep it real. I'm in Jersey and Philly. It's the same shit where we're at. The, the, the GSM GMs, how many appointments you got? Psh, and the, and it's, it's just grind, grind, grind. The problem is, is if that, if all you're doing is being a freaking cyber laborer, and you're not using logic and strategy, you're not maximizing. Let me explain, okay? We track tens, tens and tens of millions of phone calls. And what we found without a predictive dialer, let's just say a hundred, our clients do a minimum of 120 outbound calls, like legit, but let's just use a hundred for this number here. On average, you're looking at about a seven to 9% connection ratio. That means if you call people only, if you call a hundred people in a day, Okay, if you're a BD syrup sales manager, you, me, whoever, I promise you, you're only at about seven to nine conversations. The reality is emails only have a two to 4% read open rate. That means there's so much not answering the phones, no callbacks, no response to emails, no click throughs. So if we are not methodical, relentless and follow up, most of these people are, are not going to see us. So here's a dumb statement, but true. If you want to be successful in internet operations, you have to respond faster and better than everybody else. That's a true statement, but it's lame. Here's a more powerful statement for someone like you. Okay, this is a compliment. What you need to do, in my opinion, is not only be faster and better at email, phone call, text messaging, you've got to do the shit that nobody else is willing to do. If you want the things that the average dealership doesn't have, you have to be willing to do the things the average dealership isn't willing to do legally, ethically, more speaking. For example, I'm going to show you something in VIN. And a lot of people don't even realize this. And I'm like, yo, my man, are you crazy? Okay, so I'm in my tool right here. Okay, VIN is only one of two CRMs. Can you see my screen? I can. You see, is only one of two CRMs that integrates with Facebook Log and Facebook Messenger. Okay, now, again, my daughter works at this dealership. I don't randomly go into dealers things on Zoom, but I have permission from the dealer that I can do this with them. So I'm going to pull this in. This is a real dealership in New Jersey. As you see this, this is not a PowerPoint. I'm in their CRM. And here you go. This is a, and don't steal this shit because I know you guys got a Kia dealership. <laughs> so this is a real lead, John Hammer, on a, a 2023 Kia Soul. So follow me on this. 
do you notice that Vin has Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Pinterest? Okay. Now me personally, I'm not a big fan of Twitter DM or Pinterest DM, but I am absolutely a massive proponent for Facebook or LinkedIn DM. So watch the, the logic is this. I'm going to call John. If John doesn't answer the phone uh, and I have text message permission, which I do, cause that's, that's greened out. I'm going to text message him. If he doesn't respond to me within 15 to 20 seconds, watch what I'm doing right here. I'm going to, I'm logged into Facebook. He might be one of my people. And guess what? I'm going to do a Facebook DM right here. And let's just say that this is not him on Facebook. Then what I'm going to do is, okay, he doesn't have a Facebook if that's it. Or I did get him on Facebook, but he didn't respond yet. I'm going to go to LinkedIn. And if he's here, same thing. Holy crap. You know what I mean? Like, wow, that might be him. And let's say if that's him, I'm going to do a DM right here. Now, What's kind of cool about this is that there's a couple other things that, that you can do besides Facebook and, um, and, and LinkedIn. Those are the two things I could do jump right off of Vint Solutions. But through the email address that's tied to the internet purchase request, I'm going to highlight that with my mouse. I'm going to open up Instagram. And then in the search bar, I'm going to drop the email address to see if, if they've got an Instagram. And if they do, I'm going, to in, I'm going to DM them an Instagram. And here's a really powerful one for you at Pacifico because you are in freaking Philadelphia, right by the airport. There's mad minorities all around you, bro. And there's Hispanics, there's Asians, all sorts of shit. WhatsApp is the number one social platform for minorities because of the free long distance. So what I am telling you, that I do and my clients do, and we're murdering the shit, is that not only are we following up with prospects through email, phone call, text message, we're also following up them religiously through social media DM, through Facebook DM, through Instagram DM, through LinkedIn DM, and through WhatsApp DM, and even what's through TikTok DMs. So my question is, have you used, not once or twice, but is it part of your action plans and your process social media DMs? Not as much as it was before because of changes that Vin Solutions made. So Vin Solutions used to be able, when you click that Facebook button, you used to be able to draw on the phone number and email immediately. And it used to be pretty good as far as accuracy. Um, there are times when uh, if they have a really unique name, we'll look it up. But we do get hit with a lot of the, you know, Abdul Muhammad's, like you were saying, where it's a little harder. But yeah, no, there's no, there's no end game to the, the right amount of follow up. You can't follow up enough. Yeah. And not just enough, it's diversifying it because most salespeople, most dealerships are absolutely not using social media DM to engage with prospects. And that's the thing is we want to differentiate ourselves. If And this is another thing. Google did a, a report with, with Compete and Pulp Data years ago. It's called the, the, new, uh, it's the, it's the new Car Purchase Pass. They basically say, it, let's use Ford, that yes, it's the F-150 is the number one selling vehicle for 45 years or whatever it is. But the reality is Almost 80% of people that are looking for any car, let's say a Ford F-150, are cross-shopping. So if somebody's looking at an F-150 in 2023, there is an 80% shot that they're looking at Silverados, Sierras, uh, Tundras, or, or Ram 1500s, et cetera. So the reason why I reference this is that, again, if I have an internet purchase request that's coming through... I know in my mind that if I'm a Ford dealer, not only is this person probably looking at other Ford dealers, you know, to try to get a better price or availability, but they're probably looking at my competitors. So that means that there's a lot of people that are going to be emailing, phone calling and text messaging them. So yes, my emails and text messages need to happen. You know what I mean? I have to do what they're doing too, to be competitive and I got to be better and faster, but I want to do something that most of my competitors wouldn't even dream of doing. That's Absolutely. utilizing Facebook Messenger, Instagram Messenger, you know, uh, uh, D, things like that. And I'm going to be specific so you understand. So when you talk to Maria, you know, Pacifico would have you or whoever, you know, your main contact is over there, is that there are no laws for this, okay? With text messaging, you have the, the FCC TCPA guidelines for, for safeguarding text messaging and, and that type of stuff, but there are no rules for social media DMs. It's like the fucking wild, wild west. So if, if there's if there's no rules for it, if you have a mechanism that enables you to establish engagement with the prospect, in my opinion, you should be able to, to maximize this. And I want to show you that I'm not just spitting this out here on a podcast. Now, a lot of you 
are listening to this, you can't see what's on my screen. Uh, but uh, trust me, uh, you could, if you're in my Millionaire Car Salesman group, we're live streaming this right now. I'm going to show you. I'm going to go into my dealer synergy processes. Now, folks, let me just take a digress real quick right here. Brian, let me share some with you. I have created over a hundred and sixty thousand dollars in in crm process i don't charge nearly that much but again i want you to look at this with your expertise nobody in the country has this much content for vin solutions and that's coming from vin solutions corporate watch this this is my custom processes right here i'm going to scroll look at i have over a that, that is that is very impressive oh, watch i have 1100 pieces of content 500 plus in english 500 plus in Spanish. I have CRM processes. I got data money, equity money. I got OEM processes. I got acquisition processes. I got finance, special finance, trade, new car, used car. Look at this stuff. Now watch. Now you see this. The next thing here is let's look. Well, watch. Nobody's going to code like this. Look, I have coaching tips. And when we're building these out, this means call, voicemail, text, social media, DM. These are our quad processes. Look at this. Don't forget to send a social media DM. I'm coding this in. I'm saying, don't forget to use Apple FaceTime, Skype, custom video email, video text message. Why? Because a video email increases read open rates up to 300%. I'm also making sure that we're diversifying the time of days that we call because there's two time zones in CRM, in my opinion. Uh, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. is time zone one, and then 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. is time zone two. 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. is pretty big. 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. is kind of small, but that is prime time to connect on the phones. Now, you see all this. Now, these are just the processes, but then each one of these processes includes a library of templates. Look at the fucking library of content that's here, brother. And then look at the, the, the scripting. Okay. So we've got scripts, templates, we got email scripts, social media scripts, all this stuff here. The reason why I'm showing this to you is that this is the level that we play out in CRM. You know what I mean? Like we want to be able to make sure that a, a, a salesperson, a dealership, a department has all of the resources for every possible scenario. Now, especially for you guys, watch in Spanish. Everything is in Spanish. And when I say Spanish, it's the content. So watch when I yes. go into the emails, all the emails are in Spanish. And then watch this, even the phone scripts, the phone scripts are in Spanish. So my CRM setup, 1,100 pieces of content, 50% of it is in, his, in Spanish. The other 50% is all in English. How crazy is that, brother? I love it. I love it. I don't have as a robust of a Spanish process. I just got a few automated texts and emails going out uh, in Spanish, but that is the most impressive stuff I've ever seen. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I'm about to, I'm about to take it to a whole nother level. Watch this. This is what I'm really proud of. And I'm, I'm, I'm like a nerd right now geeking out with you because I, I respect your CRM ninja skills. Watch this. We are the only company that's ever done what I'm about to show you. So not only do we have, you know, all that stuff, I'm going to log you into the world's largest training platform. My brother and Amanda, I have 8,600 modules. I dropped over 7 million cash in building this. Nobody in the world in automotive, not Cardone, not Verdi, none of these people spend a fraction of the money that I do on, on, on training. So what you're looking at, I'm just waiting for this to load in, is our freaking training platform. So watch this. I have 8,600 training modules in our training platform. And I'm just gonna, I'm just doing a quick scan so you can see all this stuff. Can you imagine? Yes, it's deep. All, it's bro, 80, 8,600 training modules. Now, watch this. I have an entire section right here, and I want you to see what it is for CRM. It's the only thing in the entire industry like this. So I have a complete video on demand training, tracking, testing certification for CRM right here. And now because we work with 13 different CRMs, okay, sure. I have universal content, but look at what you see here, because I'm on the VIN advisory board. I've got over five hours of high level training. Remember, we're not teaching buttonology or the shit that Vince teaching you. I'm teaching you everything the dealerships don't get from anybody else processes, action plans, templates, word tracks, scripting, you know, content, strategies, how to secure the appointment, strategies, how to engage, how to get people to call you. All that stuff is here. And here's the best part about it. I have nine major VIN executives that are on my platform. Remember, I'm broadcasting this live to 
26,000 people in my group, and then tens of thousands more people are going to listen to this podcast, right? And I can't say anything unless it's true. Think of me like Sony Records, and I own Vin Solutions Masters because in here, it's not just me. I flew to Vin headquarters. So we got. now I want to talk about sales goals, right? Everybody has to have a roadmap in order to get where they're. That's Craig Simpson. He's a high level manager at Vin, and he's actually used to be in your area, New Jersey, Philadelphia. He's got 32 years automotive, 16 years Vin Solutions. We've got him. We've got his boss's boss, his boss's boss's boss, and his boss's <laughs> boss's boss, boss is there. Like we have Mark Vickery. We've got Jeremy Cogwell, we have him, and I've got a, a total of nine major VIN executives. The reason why, here's what we do with dealers. We go in and we do everything from CRM audits. We do everything from CRM triage, CRM crime scene cleanup. We, we build all the processes in, we customize them. We train all the salespeople, BDC reps, et cetera, through Zooms, on site sometimes, and then through our online university, brother. And then we support them on a daily, weekly, monthly level. We're helping them, you know, with CRM mastery. How cool is that? And that's the most beautiful stuff. Um, when when I'm talking to somebody in Vin and, and we're bouncing ideas off and we're going down these rabbit holes of if then scenarios and, and oh, what can we do here? And just uh, to see that the genuine passion going on of how, teaching each other how to manipulate these processes to work advantageously is like the coolest thing ever. Uh, it just makes me smile when I was telling you, it's like, life's so good. I, I woke into a dream every day. I love this stuff. Nah, man. I, and I, and I respect it. It's not very often that I hear people geeking out about CRM or Vin solution. So, you know, thank you for hanging out with me for this time. And, and just to recap, what we've been talking about right here is just the significance and importance about CRM. And, and the way that I look at this is, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I mean no disrespect by people, because people, I'm from New York, so people kind of get sometimes the bad feeling about like, like oh, why do you say that? Because uh, I'm just being brutally honest. If you are a lazy motherfucker, right? If you're lazy, then you should know CRM. Because yeah. I'm just being honest, if, if you're lazy and you don't want to work for shit, you just want to have your life easy, that if you can if you can set up your CRM and understand how it works, it's like having a team, a freaking team of personal assistants at your fingertips. And, and I'm serious because you it, you could set it up to notify you of all, like, you ever see that movie Devil Wears Prada where the psychotic, you know, executive had the high level assistant and she's whispering, oh, that's Mark. Mark's married to Wendy. And, 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 and that's what assistant's <laughs> supposed to do. CRM stands for customer relationship. Relationship relationship, relationship, relationship management. And nobody fucking talks about it. It drives me crazy is that the real value of CRM is building relationships, perpetuating relationships, you know, and, and being able to, let's just say if I was gonna sell you a car, it's find out everything about you, about you, about your life, about your interests, about your family, about your kids, birthdays, anniversaries. And I wanna be the dude that is, that is, is, giving you more attention than your own fucking friends and family. I want to be wishing you happy birthday, happy anniversary. If you like the Eagles on kickoff day, go Eagles. I mean, I want to build and perpetuate those relationships. People buy cars from people they like, trust, or, or believe. And that's what a CRM is supposed to do. So if you don't want to work harder than you have to, learn CRM. Now, if you are an automotive professional and you want to improve your game, you want to do more, be more and achieve more. One of the best ways is being able to engage your CRM. Your CRM is like a Swiss army knife. You don't need third-party providers. You don't need SEO. You don't need a website. You don't need shit. You got everything. It's like the gift that keeps on giving. You don't just have leads. You can through data money, equity money, through orphan owners, through service. You can have plenty of food to eat but here's the, here's the difference. Most people now don't know how to hunt and gather or fish. They know how to go to fucking Walgreens or they know how to go to, uh, you know, like one of those bougie, you know, supermarkets. What are those ones? Like uh, the, the Trader Foods. Joe's or Whole Foods instead of like, bro, I'm from the streets, bro. What are you kidding me? Stop playing with me. Bro, you'll you catch me in a shop, hunt. right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And if you know how to eat off the land, that's the equivalent yeah, I mean, like, again, if you know how to go into the CRM and do this shit, how liberating it is that that you don't have to wait for the magic up bus. You don't miss a bonus by one car. How many people listening to my podcast right now have missed a fucking bonus by one car or worse, a half a car because it was a split deal? Can you imagine? No, that should never happen. You should never not make the money that you want, need and deserve 
because you missed this or you missed that or the new ups. Nah, man, if you understand the CRM and how to engage that shit, you can eat. You could be a glutton. Brian, am I lying or am I telling the truth? Your CRM's neutral. It's a neutral platform. It's as good as you want it to be. It's as shitty as you, you know, you interpret it to be. Um, something as simple as happy birthday. You know, one of the easy changes I, I, I did that had big results. The text that went out and the email said, happy birthday from Brian at Pacifico. Well, how about happy birthday at Brian Pacifico dot, 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 how's the car? You'd be amazed how many people say it's great, Brian, but I'm ready for a new one. It's like simple things like that. You have to want it. You have to want, you have to see an opportunity. It's, it's really just glass half full stuff. No, absolutely, brother. So listen, I am really excited about what you and, and what your group is doing. And I, I don't know if they know how lucky they are that they have somebody that respects and appreciates CRM and not only respects and appreciates, but is actually using that shit the right way. So if, if for nothing, I got to just tell you, I see a ton of people, as you can imagine, you know, in my life and what I do for a living. And so it's very rare to find somebody that is not only passionate, but successful. I mean, there's a lot of people that are passionate about a lot of things, but to make, make money and become successful off your passion, I think is a true blessing to what you said before. That's why you're happy, man. You're living the dream. So again, thank you for your thank time you. and your knowledge. And I want to let you, I want to let you close it out. Is there anything you want to add, whether it's a tip, a takeaway, uh, anything you want to say, let, you have the, you have the floor. Always consider when your people for the managers, your people are going to be off. Your people are going to be sick. Use the CRM to continuously follow up. There's so much opportunity and uh, harness your uh, account manager, but you know, ask him what other dealers are doing. Cause you might, you might find a good manager who's going to give you some good tips. I'm always around to give tips. I don't ever worry about giving secrets out. Cause if I tell you about one thing I'm doing, I'm already thinking about the next thing. So I'm more than happy to share. Awesome, brother. I appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to, you know, hearing more about your successes and who the hell knows. Again, two CRM ninjas working together. We could form a clan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no doubt. Brother. A good clan, Thank not you. the bad clan for the record. people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right listen, brother. take care, my friend. Thank you. Bye. So there you have it. The Millionaire Car Salesman podcast. This podcast comes to you every week from the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. If you have a question about the show or would like the chance to become a guest, feel free to contact us directly at 856-546-2440 or email us at millionairecarsalesman at gmail.com. This program is a presentation of Synergy Records, produced by Tiana Mick and L.A. Williams. Production and engineering by L.A. Williams. The Millionaire Car Salesman podcast is hosted every week by L.A. Williams and the Millionaire Car Salesman himself, Sean V. Bradley. The Millionaire Car Salesman podcast can be found everywhere, so please don't forget to review, subscribe to, and share the show. Thanks for listening to the Millionaire Car Salesman podcast, and remember, where I'm from, money provides options. If you enjoyed this podcast, then make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave us a review. You know, let some other folks know about it. Oh, and don't forget to join the Millionaire Car Salesman group on Facebook. We'll see you there.